Something's going to happen. Something wonderful. G'day fans and welcome to another exciting episode of Wednesday Night of Talk Nerdy to Me. As I speak right at this very millisecond, there's not a single person watching this show. So there we go. <laughs> Two people have just joined us. So I was a bit worried there for a while. Holy guacamole. They thought, oh, what a way to waste a Wednesday night by joining it with us. So anyway, g'day guys. Colin Parkinson. G'day Colin. How you going, old son? All the numbers are streaming up to number four. How good is that? <laughs> anyway, before I get too excited, I've got to introduce my fellow lads. I have MPS and Jeffro. How are we, boys? Good. Oh, good evening, all. Welcome, nerds. This is a discussion I wanted to have. Um, uh, I didn't know how to actually promote this, how to word it uh, correctly, but I wanted to have a bit of a natter about film series uh, that start off um, on a high and then for whatever reason, they either make too many sequels or you could argue not enough sequels, uh, films that deserve sequels that didn't get them or ones that had too many and they just like went off in massive tangents and you sort of think, where the hell were these things going? And to, just to provide an example of what I'm talking about, this one now, as a general rule, you can it's like take movies at face value and, and enjoy them for what they are, but this series, kind of give me the irrits, right? And then I'll explain why in a sec. So, got the Terminator movies, right? So it started off with the first Terminator. And it, it, actually, it kind of gives me the shits, actually. This really irritate, irritates me big time. So you got the first movie that comes out in 84, it's Grouse, right? Got the second film, comes out in 91. It's Grouse. It's awesome, right? Then they produce the third one, which is like a continuation of the, of the second one, you know, in the same time frame. They then jump a thousand billion years in the future with Terminator Salvation, Regardless of whether you like the films or not, at least they followed a sort of chronological time scale to a large degree, right? By and large, right? Somewhere in there, you chuck in the Sarah Chronicle, Connor Chronicles. All right, it's fine. There's a TV series, it's not a movie you can deal with. If you don't watch it, it doesn't matter, right? Then some wag in 2015 says, oh, let's just make a new movie called Terminator Genesis. And it's effectively remaking um, uh, like the second film to a large degree by changing the main cast. I was like, oh, we'll change Sarah to a different actress. We'll change Kyle Reese to a different actor. You know, John Connor's a different actor, but the Terminator is the same one, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And it's meant to be the start of a new franchise, right? And I, and I read this today and it's really, really got up my go. So a Skydance, because it's produced by Skydance said, it's not a traditional remake, nor is it a continuation or a sequel, nor is it exactly a reboot. In a sense, it's a reimagining. What kind of bullshit talk is that, right? So effectively, they're taking this awesome franchise that did really, really well, and then they're trying to remake it, start again with a brand new cast. And it's what I frustrated me is that they're thinking from the audience's point of view, are we complete idiots? Are we just supposed to just like wash off like the other films never existed at all and just say, oh, yes, this is the new Terminator. This is how it was meant to be. And that just really irked me big time. And then on top of that, um, they bring in Dark Fate. So then the franchise goes back to uh, James Cameron. And then they say, oh, no, the third film, the fourth film, and the fifth film didn't exist. We're now going to make a sequel to the second film. And it's like, well, hang on. As the audience who've been watching these things for 20 years, you can't just switch that off and go and pretend it didn't happen. It's like, but it did happen. Terminator 3 did happen. Salvation did happen. Genesis did happen. You can't just wipe that out and go, oh, no, we'll just bypass these things completely. And then... When they make Dark Fate, it's tanks, right? The, the critics hate it. The public hate it. Everybody hates it. And even the director said um, he believed that people didn't like it because it was the sixth film and Hollywood should be making original movies and not repeating franchises. How, how can you not know that? And it's like, clearly, it's like it's, it's treating the audience as idiots. And it's like saying, oh, no, we'll just accept what's happening with this film and pretend the Genesis didn't exist and da-da-da-da. And I find that really frustrating. It's like, well, of course it's going to fail. It doesn't matter if James Cameron's working on it. It doesn't matter if um, Linda Hamilton's in it or Schwarzenegger. It doesn't matter. You can't treat your audience as idiots, right? If you're going to do something like this, you have to wait another 10, 20 years, whatever, when the dust has really settled. You can't just change things that quickly. And I found uh, this particular series uh, an example where they, um, the studios were complete morons. They lost money on Genesis 
they lost money on Dark Fate. So they make Genesis, they go, this is the start of a brand new series. It tanks. So they go, all right, we're not going to make any more after that. And even Amelia Clark said, she's glad. No more sequels. Didn't want to be a part of it. Dark Fate comes out. Is it going to be a new series of movies? It tanks. So they cancel those ones as well. And I think that should be a lesson to the studios to say, don't treat your audience as idiots. And I think in this case, that's exactly what happened. So I, it really shits me. So uh, I'll get off my soapbox now before I start swearing. So there you go. And that's just the Terminator. There's a whole lot of other movies, but I'll start with that. So there you go. Well, that's kind of like Solo. You know, Solo tanked because of all the problems they had in production and all that sort of stuff. And we were promised uh, a couple of other films from that franchise, and we're not going to get anything. We're going to get a couple of pretty average TV series, Obi-Wan Kenobi and whatever else they're going to do. And we're going to have um, no more stories of how Han Solo became Han Solo, essentially. Yeah, yeah but I mean, I can understand Solo because it was a standalone movie and it, it didn't work for the box office. And But the film itself wasn't a bad thing, right? I'm talking about yeah. where studios treat people, treat their audience as idiots and go, and, and it is a known fact, and Steven Spielberg once did this, he said this in a documentary, I think it was for Raiders. He said, on camera, right? You make a movie, it makes money, you make more movies. That's simply how the world turns. And even Michelle has said, um, seems like they made it for the sake of the dollar. That's exactly right. But when they tank and they don't make the dollars, it's only afterwards they go, well, why did it fail? Oh, maybe it failed because we treated the audience as complete morons thinking, oh, it's easy for them. They're just going to just take it at face value and it's no problem at all. It's like, guys, seriously, you've got to just be aware of when you're doing the right thing and when you're doing the wrong thing. And we saw this with the Superman series, the Batman series, uh, and what was the other series? Uh, the Alien series, where as they got further along, the films got worse and worse and worse and worse. And you think by the fourth one, you think they'd realise, hang on, we're actually making the franchise worse. We're not improving on it. We're not even making money on it. We're making the thing worse. It's actually degrading to the original source material. And it just it just irritates me. And it's still this is still going on today. So there you go. And just very quickly, somebody from England contacted us and just sent a note through. Somebody called uh, nearly noon over there, midday. Uh, whoever it is in England who's watching us, um, yeah, g'day. I hope you can understand our accent. So uh, there we go. So very good. So someone has actually been around for quite a while. So... Uh, thank you, Colin. Yes, bravo to me because it's it, it's kind of frustrates me. So, uh, uh, Jeffro, you got anything? If you're talking to us, can you? What do you got anything to say? I, I I am. So, I mean, I almost think that there's a lot of blame to be put on Tim Burton because you mentioned that word reimagining, and the first time we heard that was back in I think 2001 with his Planet use of that word for Planet of the Apes. Mm -hmm. And we all know how well that went. I mean, some people may love it, but uh, generally it didn't do well. And next thing you know, he's reimagining all these other things. So we're suddenly getting to see uh, Dark Shadows reimagined. Uh, there's Charlie in the Chocolate Factory reimagined. Uh, there is Alice in Wonderland reimagined. Uh, I mean, it's just one of those things where I think we just think, please leave it alone. You don't need to go back to use, using that source material. We're happy with the original. But sometimes with reimaginings, I'm not saying they're a good thing, but you can get away with it. And just quickly, it was April Claridge, who's actually, I can't believe, exactly, yeah, Jeff, I knows who I'm talking to. April Claridge, oh, my God. G'day, April. How are you going? Good to see you. Hi, April. Um, uh, sometimes with the reimaginings, you can get away with it, right, if enough time has passed. And a good example I can mention is that you had the Superman series right through to Quest of Peace. Then you had Superman Returns that came out, uh, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, right? But enough yeah. time has passed where you could say, all right, this is meant to be a sequel to the second film. And you can say, you know what? We can deal with it, right? It's not like they produced it four or five years after the fact, like they did with Spider-Man. They produced the three movies, then they reboot it, then they reboot the bloody thing again, all in the space of a decade. It's like, what the hell are you guys doing over there? So you can sometimes get away with it. And people can sort of say with Planet of the Apes, see it as a, as a single entity. And they go, if it doesn't work for me, it doesn't ruin the previous movies of the 60s and the 70s so sometimes you can get away with it but i do agree sometimes it can irk people if they remake something that you love the original source material so um i'll, I'll yeah. tell you another interesting fact this is this has come from uh, people that have made sequels what happens is that the first one does really big and then the studios come and say well we want another one but they'll actually give them less money to be able yeah. to make the movie they're almost anticipating that well, we know not, a not as many people are going to see it, therefore we'll give you less 
money. So how are you supposed to make a movie that it's going to be up to par with the original if you're getting less money and, uh, and, and less commitment to this from the studios? So, you know, sequels are inevitably sort of, unless you self-finance them like uh, George Lucas did with his, uh, are going to run into uh, inherent trouble. Um, yeah, Quest for Peace is a classic example of that. The Superman series started off so well, and uh, uh, Golan and Globus had the rights for Superman 4, and they just, like, gave them virtually no money whatsoever, and, of course, the film tanked for that. Another example of a film series where enough time had passed where they could then produce a fourth film was the Mad Max series. So you had Mad Max 1, 2, and Th Thunderdome in the 70s and 80s, and then, like, was it 10 years ago or 15 years, whatever it was, when they produced Fury Road, that enough time had passed, you say, you know what? We can do with a new movie now. It kind of works. It fits, even though they've changed the main actor and all the rest of it. You can sort of get it, do it, and get away with it. So there are examples where it does work, and it's not treating the audience as as, as, as idiots as they did with Terminator. Um, Alien is another one where they sort of like started on a high and then it sort of tanked, and all of a sudden they're doing prequels to the prequels and all this sort of business, and people just aren't happy with it all. And it's not as bad as what Terminator has done, because Terminator is just horrendous what they've done with that. But uh, it's sort of heading on the same path. And it's like sometimes it is the old leave well enough alone. And, and some of the best films in history, there's just one of. They just didn't make sequels. They just left them as is. And, um, yeah, you've got to be very, very careful when you start producing sequels to movies because it can be detrimental to the rest of the franchise. So there you go. So in, in, um, terms, of, in terms of the Spider-Man films, we'll jump back a second because the reason they rebooted them uh, the second time was because Sony were going to lose the rights to them apparently. So they decided to redo the whole thing rather than continue on the story. They started them all over again so that Sony had the rights for it for another 10 years uh, in terms of, well, the Tobey Maguire and the, the other kid. Uh, in terms of the new ones, well, that's a whole, that's part of the, the Marvel um, MCU. So that's a whole different sort of thing. But the thing is, from the audience's point of view, they're seeing the same character in three movies and then rebooted only a couple of years later and the same origin story all over again. It's like, hang on, we just, and, and the Tobey Maguire films were great. So it's not like they were cr complete crap and needed to be done. So yeah. regardless of whatever rights they were, I mean, it was like, hang on, why are they doing this? It's, it just seemed dumb. So anyway, um, uh, what have we got here? Uh, was it Susie said, Disney movies have second, third, fourth movies. Yeah, I know they uh, exactly yeah. right. I mean, Pirates of the Caribbean is a good example. They've just sort of like pummeled out sequel after sequel. I think people have lost track of what's what and who's who in the zoo. Oh. I'll give well, you an example. Sorry, I was going to Sorry, say. I'll give, you example of, um, I'll give you my example of your version of Terminator, and that's X Men. Yeah, I mean, how many X Men's do we need? I know. And it's 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 the same as uh, your Terminator example. It's like sort of why didn't they learn? Why didn't they yeah. learn? Yeah, and it does get to a stage where you sort of lose track, and it's like there's another one, and there's and of course like they go forward in time, then they're going back in time, and it's in the end you can go what movie do I watch now? I've completely lost track. This is a prequel. This is a sequel. This is a thingy. This is that. And it just got very convoluted. And, um, yeah, I actually watched the X-Men films not that long ago and I could sort of see what they were trying to do. But by the same token, it's like, it just like, it wasn't necessary. Did you need it? Uh, and I yeah. think there'd be an argument to say, look, you don't. And I mean, I find it funny just on a complete tangent, like home alone, they make one film where the kid gets stuck at home, then they make three more after it. It's like, how many times can a kid be stuck at home by himself? It's like, <laughs> what? And the audience thought the fourth one was a good idea. And it was like, fire out. So, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, X Men was another one that uh, is a, a small bugbear, but not as bad as uh, Terminator, in uh, my opinion. So, um, so, an example where you can reboot certain things, Batman is a classic example, right? They started off grouse in the 80s and the 90s, balls that up with Forever and Batman and Robin, left it alone for 10 years. And then said, all right, we'll start again with a brand new actor, new series, Batman Begins. And that worked. And, of course, it worked because the previous couple of films were complete tripe. But um, they could at least restart again and reset it. And it was all good. And then after that, it's like, great, we've got a new Batman series. It's awesome. And then suddenly, bang, oh, shit, now we've got another Batman a character playing Batman. And now today we've got another character playing Batman. So they're heading down the same path again that you know, we've seen these other series do. And it's just like... And not enough time has passed. I mean, people need time to just say, let's just accept what we've got and relax, and then maybe 15, 20 something years later, uh, reset everything, not just like five or 10 years later. It's just crazy. I, I think, in terms of the Batman franchise, though, the different versions of Batman that have been put out make it a little bit different 
you know, so there was the Keaton version, you know, the 90s versions. Uh, then you had uh, Kristen Bale's version, which was all right. It was it was at one point closer to the comic books than anything else. And uh, Ben Affleck's version was even more closer to the comic books. Uh, but the completely different versions, you know, Ben Affleck's character was meant to be much older uh, rather than beginning like he was back in the Keaton and Kristen Bale terms. Mm. I mean, I thought it was funny. Sorry. I thought it was funny. As I mentioned earlier, the Superman films, you have Superman Returns, right? And instead of saying, oh, we'll make another series of movies with the same guy playing Superman, I was like, we'll just restart it all again with Man of Steel. And it's like, far out. It's like, what was the point of making Returns if you were going to make Man of Steel? It makes no sense whatsoever. And from the audience's point of view, it's like, far out. It's like, it, it, there's, it, there's no continuity. It doesn't gel. And if anything, it's, you find it frustrating. Uh, and when people say, what movie should I watch? They go, well, he's got this dude here, he's got that dude there, that dude. It's like, yeah, I know, just move on. Look, if, if the franchise works out and the series of films becomes better than awesome, but Man of Steel was a terrible Superman film. The okay. writing was terrible. The the whole concept of him being known to, to everyone almost in, in the first five minutes was just horrendous. Um, but if that had worked out to be the most brilliant Superman film of all time, we wouldn't have been complaining about it. But, you know, these execs are doing things for who knows what reasons. I think the DC um, guys are just trying to keep up with Marvel and Marvel are blitzing uh, comic book films over the last 10 to 12 years. Yeah, I, I get that. I mean, it's all from how the audience sees it. I like what Michelle said. Um, uh, we're not having to go at the fact that Robert Pattinson is the next Batman. It's the fact that just keep changing the Batmans that often. You know, it's like stick with the formula and get it to work rather than just like restart, 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 restart. Because from the audience's point of view, it's just like, well, hang on. You haven't even let the other series relax and settle down yet. And already we're, we're doing it again. And it is the studios saying, oh, we know it's a good market. And now it's a good thing. Let's just like we're in for the money. Not because someone says we need the world is not saying we need Batman to be rebooted. We don't, you know, begins and Dark Knight. And what was the last one? Rises. Rise. It was a great, great series of films. It worked, right? It was successful at the box office. Everybody loved it. It's great. You don't need to do it again. That's where I'm sort of coming from. Um, someone has said about the Indiana Jones films. Yeah, they were good. I mean, there are a series of films that do work well. I mean, we discussed that on this show uh, a little while ago about series of films that have that's been excellent. Lord of the Rings is a good example. Back to the Future uh, series was excellent. Um, the Hunger Games was excellent. They all worked. Even the Harry Potter movies, I guess, have all worked very, very well. So it's not in every instance, but there are plenty of instances where there are too many films for a series, and it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. And uh, yeah, Colin, it's all about the dollars. So um, and uh, hey, Angie mentioned about Spider Man. Sorry, Angie mentioned about Spider Man. It doesn't matter who was what, what was what. The fact that within a space of ten years, if I'm not mistaken, you had four or five Spider Man movies with three different Spider Men. And that's where um, it was getting a bit frustrated. Sorry, dude, I'm cut you off. I was going to say, are you, are you classing Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull as a good film? I actually don't mind Crystal Skull. Uh, I but like I, Yeah, I had no problem. But it doesn't matter. So many years had passed that the original trilogy was fine. It was like later down the track. And if people would say they didn't like it, they just don't watch it. And they just stick with the first three. So you, you can yeah, you can, you can just deal with it. So it's, it's their own. So, um, But, I mean, by the same token, it had some very, very big shoulders to stand on. So... Uh, yeah, that's the way to go. Um, another series. It's on TV the other night. Robocop 3, right? So you had the first Robocop was great. The second one, you go, yeah, I don't know why they did that. And it's like, why do you need a third one with a different actor, no less? It's like, what was the point? And I actually read about it and they said, oh, they tried to tone the violence down and all the rest and make it a bit more comedic, yada, yada, yada. It's like, did we need a third one? And I think they made a TV series as well. So it's, it does they happen did. a lot where uh, a studio will come up with a concept that works really well, brings in the money, and it's exploitation central. And I think from a film lover's point of view, it's the wrong reason for making movies. So yeah. I want to add something in with that because if you ever saw the uh, the movies that they did for television for Robocop, they're actually very good. And I think you'll find that television will actually take something on board and actually uh, make a, a sequel and actually do a very good job of it. So case in point was the movie Alienation, there was no movie sequel coming. They made a television series out of it. Fantastic. And then they made about four movies after that. So, uh, you know, sort of there is uh, times where a movie studio may fail, but a television studio may um, take it to the next level. And I think we saw most recently with um, Dark Crystal, how that yep. can be um, 
fantastic case of you won't see a movie sequel, but you'll see something on television, and it really does work. And uh, and I, I think sort of uh, uh, last case in point, Westworld. You know, uh, we yeah. saw Future World. That was a great movie, but television has has taken that and. Uh, the dial one is frozen up on us. Um, Stargate is another one. It started as a film, went into yeah. a TV series and was very successful. So uh, that was all pretty groovy. Uh, I agree, Susie. They did not need a fourth Men in Black. I think we sort of are well aware of that. That's another money-making scheme. Uh, and Transformers, yeah, exactly right. Oh, it's a great thing. Bring in the money. Bang, just churn and churn and churn. Eventually, the quality will just plummet if it hasn't already. And, of course, then people just say, well, what was the point? Um, a good example of a series of films where it was a bit more well thought out. So you had the original five Planet of the Eight movies from the 1960s through to the 70s, right? Then you had the reboot, uh, reimagining in 2001. Yeah, well, it wasn't much chop, came and went. But they waited long enough to do a prequel reimagining of the series with Rise, Dawn and War, okay? And enough time had passed that it wasn't disrespectful to the original material. It was a fresh new look and the three films were great. And whoever came up with that idea and said, let's just do it now and not do it like in 2002 straight after the Tim Burton version or anything like that. It worked. And uh, that is an example where a reimagining can or reboot, whatever you want to call it, can work very, very well. And the quality was great. So um, they did the three and that was it. Done, dusted. No one said, oh, let's just churn out a fourth and a fifth and a sixth and a seventh and an eighth. They at least do three, done, and pack up and go home. So that one uh, gets a huge thumbs up. So some studios, not many, but some definitely get it right. So uh, there you go. Well, I was going to say that uh, Pitch Black was a, an, another example of a series that had a brilliant first film, and then the second two were bigger budgeted and all that sort of stuff, and I didn't think worked for the character. Mm. You know, it didn't seem to work, and... and you lost everything that he was uh, from the first film, which made him, you know, who he was sort of thing. So, uh. yeah, typically as sequels come into play, different writers come in, different producers, different directors, and they just take things on a different tangent. And that's what usually brings these things undone in the first place. Some of the best movie series have all been made by the same people uh, right across the board. And they were planned in advance, weren't just made up as they went along. It's only after the thing makes a squillion dollars that somebody at the studio says, oh, no, we're going to have like six more of these. Uh, just bring in some dudes and just like make it. Who cares if it's crap or not? Just do it because it's going to bring in the money. And eventually it doesn't bring in the money. And they go, all right, we'll cancel that, wait a few years, and then just restart all over again with a brand new team. And they don't learn the lessons from it. So, um, so yeah, it's a sacrificing a quantity for quality. And, uh, yeah, um, someone has mentioned about uh, Westworld, as you said, Jeffro. Yeah, Westworld was a good transition from a movie to a TV series, and enough time had passed that if you'd never seen the original movie, it didn't matter, okay? Or if you just want to not watch the TV series, it doesn't matter. So they're not meant to dovetail into each other, which is um, kind of groovy. So uh, then you get the studios that support the fans and you give them a voice. Yeah, well, that's right, uh, Michelle. I uh, saw so you got like Firefly and Serenity. Uh, that was another example, wasn't it, where the TV series came first and the film came afterwards. Uh, and that sort of worked well. And ironically, it was such a critical cool success that the studios cancelled it all. And it's like, yeah, right, yet they'll produce all this other stuff that you don't necessarily need or want, which can be uh, equally as frustrating. So I think if fans could somehow find a way to run their own studios and produce their own products, then who knows, we may end up with a, uh, a better quality or a better thought out um, filmmaking process. So I don't know. And we can watch all this happen in real time now because the matrix number four is going to be made shortly. So we can see, <laughs> I love your eye roll too. Oh, we can now, if, if it's been oh, 15 years or thereabouts since Matrix 3, we'll see if 4, when it gets made, if it actually makes any difference to the story, if it should have been made or could have been made, and maybe our point here is actually completely necessary. Mm. It, yeah. really, it really worries me when they take all that time to sort of produce a sequel. You mentioned The Matrix. Another one that's just come to light is that they're thinking about making... Uh, another labyrinth. I mean, from the the 80s, for heaven's sake. So, uh, I mean, we are seeing things like Top Gun coming out again. Another one that sort of took ages to uh, be made, and it really scares me that they're really digging into sort of like these old concepts and trying to sort of just remake them. And uh, I think they should have learned their lesson from when they did Blues Brothers 2000, 
it was like sort of 15 20 years uh between movies and it just people didn't accept it so uh, i th really think sort of when they take too much time to be able to make a sequel that it, it's like people have lost the interest yeah well, it doesn't help when if the source material is loved by a lot of people um and it seems sacrilegious that uh films are being rebooted and the only reason why they're doing it is because someone somewhere has said hey it was really successful 30 years ago still 30 years ago um it'll be equally successful now we just modernize it for a new audience and it's a bit of a a pain but you sometimes have to accept it and you go you know what um if you're a fan of the original just don't watch the new one and just pretend it didn't exist i mean some of the most famous films in history have actually been reboots from movies of the silent era and just remakes a star is born there's four versions of that um so stretch and you most people think this barbara streisand version is the first one it's not it's the third one so um there are there is a place for it and sometimes you have to accept it uh but by and large when you do do reboots there are exceptions but by and large they definitely uh, don't do as well as the original or don't get the same fan devotion that the original did and labyrinth is a good example that did have a huge fan following as does dark crystal and all those fantasy movies from the 80s it was just the right place at the right time with the right cast and um yeah and as someone's written down there some sequels shouldn't be made i agree with you i mean there are definitely some when you go you know enough is enough just stop where you are but um yeah unfortunately when it uh, if it makes money if it's uh, financially successful you can almost bet your bottom dollar even if they've got no story to work with and there's no way it can continue it's like it's a lot it's all a nice packaged film someone somewhere will say hey we can branch an offshoot and continue on the uh, the story accordingly just make a few extra bucks so, yeah the uh, the one that really gets me of interest in terms of those examples is the uh, the new bill and ted movie that's coming out i mean mm -hmm. considering that the last ones again were you know 30 odd years ago and we've seen recently counter reeves you know sort of uh, uh excellently <clears throat> doing john wick to be able to sort of then sort of get our mindset into him playing you know sort of um that character again should be really interesting to see whether we either embrace it or really inject it uh so that'll be a good one i like um what susie said about um disney remaking animated films into live action films um i'm intrigued because lion king i actually thought i didn't see either version i didn't really that didn't sort of work for me but if the animated version never existed right at all and they just produced it is live action isn't it um yeah oh, well, it CG live action but yeah yeah, yeah okay <laughs> if they had yeah. produced that it would have been a gigantic success I, in my opinion because the first one didn't exist but the first one does exist and a lot of people obviously made a comparison between the two and of course would we'll be asking well did you need the thing to be redone just because it looks better so it's a valid point uh, there susie absolutely um and i like that one from michelle the never ending story it just continued on three sequels just went on and on and on and when they change actors you know the thing's in trouble so you got the same character but a different actor that's usually a sign that uh, things are going down the tubes pretty pretty quickly the problem with the the animated films turning into live action is they lacked the the soul of the animated film so like aladdin which is one of my favorites yes it made two other sequels and i haven't seen it and they did a tv show for it i never saw any of those because i loved the first one so much with robin williams in it but the new movie with will smith didn't need to be made mm. just really didn't it lacked the heart and the gusto of the music and the characterizations and the same with beauty and the beast you know you had uh, emma watson from harry potter being Belle, and she was just flat you know and it wasn't from her it was obviously the director didn't want her to sort of push the character but the whole the, all of those seemed flat for me as opposed to the cartoon versions which were absolutely you just sang along with the songs and mm -hmm. you got excited and knew what was going to happen and it was fun mm -hmm. but yeah, the other point is you've got sorry jeffrey you, you mentioned bill and ted you can probably get away with that because it's a time travel film depends on how it works but you're yeah, right keanu reeves is doing john wick uh bill and ted and the matrix all in one shot so that'll be interesting one of the Take interesting right. bit of trivia is that uh with aladdin uh that's actually guy Ritchie's most successful movie so he's done all these other movies in the past and that financially at the box office is his biggest number one hit mm -hmm. so i think the um moral of the story is that if a series of films are going to be made so long as they say we cap it at this number right it's generally generally going to work out okay because the story only covers x amount of, of films whether it be a trilogy like back to the future whatever else or hunger games or lord of the rings and then they just stop and they're done okay 
Uh, it's when there's only one that's ever on the cards and then they try and manufacture a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth. That's when the whole thing just, just goes down the gurgler. And, um, and, of course, from a studio's point of view, they're just going to say, well, hey, the last one just died in the ass. It doesn't matter. We'll just reboot it in 10, 20 years later anyway and just restart again. So uh, hopefully with a bit of luck, uh, yeah, it will always uh, continue to happen. And, unfortunately, um, yes, we're going to have uh, films made that are probably going to be grinding our gears in many, many ways. So there you go. Sort of line in six, throwing Hugh Jackson. Okay. There you go. Sorry, dude. I was going to say, I think, um, and yes, Colin, I saw Hugh Jackson, uh, Jackman in, in that version of Beauty and the Beast, so he was fantastic. Um, I think there are two two franchises that we haven't looked at, which are a bit sort of different to the rest of these, where they made one film during or after a TV show uh, that they never made another film to. And one was the 66 mm -hmm. Batman series. They made this film between seasons one and two and never did another film. Uh, and Thunderbirds. Uh, they did the Jonathan Franks version back in the early 2000s and someone was smart enough. I, I don't think so, but I think it could have been good as a, an older teen uh, sequel, but they said no to that. So we haven't seen another Thunderbirds film. We haven't seen another uh, live action film from the 60s series, which I think is rather interesting. I don't know if there's any other shows um serenity and firefly the only one i can think of other than that hmm. there you go all right so we're gonna buzz off we'll see you next wednesday and don't forget to always stay nerdy okay take care guys Ta -da.